Hello guys, so welcome back to my channel and listen, okay, maybe for a quick sec, I forgot I had a YouTube channel. Basically, I'm going to be speaking at an event with a really high profile person. And so we had to have a pre-session, like we had to have a panel session two weeks before we actually do the panel with everyone. So it's very interesting and I kind of just up for it. So I thought maybe that I would film a video because usually I just wear my purple gown and boxes and a Primark vest. So I thought maybe it will be good to give you an update of what's happening in Oxford and just life generally. I also wanted to update you with my grades because that has come in. Also, this video is sponsored by Pinopedia and you can find out more in the description box below or we'll come back to it later on. I am loving Oxford. Crap. I really like it, okay? Even in a silly pandemic, I'm actually still enjoying quite a lot of aspects of, of, of the uni, specifically the academic side of things. One of the reasons why I wanted to come to Oxford was to kind of redeem the academic side of me at Cambridge. My first year, I got 2-1, love that. Second year, I got a 2-2, deserve that, but hated that. Third year, <laughs> I'm not talking about third year, but I did end up graduating with 2-1. But I didn't really feel so, Confident, not in my academic ability, but confident in my transcript. And so coming to Oxford, I really wanted to work on that. So to summarize, I'm doing my master's in education, specifically higher education. And this involves six core modules and then one 20,000 word dissertation. Each module is representative of 10% of my final grade and the dissertation is worth 40%. Hmm. I'm also doing fast track Arabic in the language center. So, so far we are now in March. I have done three papers of the course already and I've already gotten my result for that. I have the other three papers to do and then I have a dissertation which is due at the end of August. And then I would finish, I think my master's around the beginning of September. So quite a while away. However, I got chucked out of Arabic. <laughs> I feel I'm getting chucked out. I am so bad at it. Listen. <laughs> I am so bad. Do you know what, actually? I'm okay, okay? Assalamu alaikum. It's me, Ibrahim Muhammad. Kayf al hal? Like, I'm okay. But I don't like failing really badly in anything in life. And so in some of my sessions that we have, you just sit there in a Zoom call, like, and they'll be like, can you recite this word? And sometimes the letters are a bit confusing, yeah? The squiggly lines. I'm trying to remember, is it ra? Is it za? Is it ra? And so you're just there like, and that's such a horrible feeling when everyone's waiting for you and you're just like mm, mm, mm. You guys know me, I will try and laugh it off as much as I can. I'll be like <laughs> I'm so bad at it. And we have a test that I think I've just failed, so looks like I'm gonna be clicked off of Arabic, which is a great start. The Arabic aside, which does not count for anything in my course, it's like an extra curriculum I'm doing. My masters is actually going okay. I actually would say pretty good. A lot of my modules require you to do presentations and I definitely think that I have a strong hold on that. Granted, I try not to do as many as I can, but I feel like I'm engaging. And in terms of actual results, so the first module I did, which was called the Foundation of Educational Research, I got a distinction in that. I got a 71, I believe. This was due in December. I got my result in January. And it motivated me, definitely like lit a fire under my ass because I was like, wow, I got a distinction, like I'm on a roll. And that lasted for about a week. And then I just lost motivation. I think pandemic related. Having said that, while I was waiting for that result, I had two other papers. So one was an exam on higher education and economics, which I thought I was going to flop. And I did end up getting a distinction on that paper as well. I got a 73 in that one, I believe. The questions that they were quite fun, they gave you a list and you could pick. I chose questions that were related to the economics of COVID and how that impacts higher education and the other one which was about like student tuition fees and the kind of economics about that. So that's good, two distinctions which is amazing. And then came the paper that I actually thought I was going to smack. I actually thought that this essay was gonna be picked up and published in like a journal because of how passionate I was about it. The module was called Higher Education and PPD politics, philosophy, and debates, which I thought I would smack. I was so engaging in class, and I actually picked a question that was revolving around widening participation and access, something that I literally eat, breathe, and live. Everyone in my department knows that this is my topic, and I got a 65 on that. I know some of you guys might be thinking that you're so annoying, Gibbs, 65 is still good. With all due respect to everyone, I love you all. That is a good grade. I hold myself to my standards. Listen, I was the boy who was upset when I got an A, in psychology A level and not an A star. And everyone in my sixth form was annoyed at me and hated me because everyone else got C's and D's. And they were like, why are you complaining? I hold myself to very high standard. I always have, okay? So I was annoyed that I got a 65. It's fine, I'm over it. 
<laughs> um, if I had got like a 65 in the other papers, but a 70 in this one, which I thought I was gonna smack, then maybe I think I would have been more happy as opposed to now, because I got the lowest in this. So this means my average overall now is 69.7. <sighs> I really want to get a distinction, inshallah, I'm aiming for a distinction, because I just feel like, you know what, I'm clearly capable, why not, and I think it would be amazing, but this thing, basically mine, has brought down my average, so the next three papers and exams I have, plus dissertation, I'm going to put my all in, which I have been doing, hence why I've not really been on social media that much, so academically, I'm really kind of enjoying the year, and fingers crossed I can get a strong grade that I'm I'm proud of. One thing I will say that I love about the exams you do at Oxford is they give you feedback. They give you feedback on the exams, which I really, really like. They'll give you a paragraph and it's like quite detailed and I'm quite like, wow, I never got this, any form of this at Cambridge. Also, some of the feedback I've got is a bit interesting. Someone told me to include headers in an essay. I have never included headers in an essay. I don't know if that's Oxford trying to, trying to, trip me up. Can someone clarify that please? In an essay, do you put headings in? Like subheadings? I don't, I don't do that. Please let me know in the comments down below. And my dissertation, well this is something that I have been thinking a lot about. I don't have an exact title but I'm going to be researching the free school meal Oxford and Cambridge student experience. I'm so sick of Oxford and Cambridge talking about state school, disadvantage, we're so amazing, we have X amount of state school students, we all know in 2021 that if you come from a state school that is not an indicator of coming from a poor background, granted free school meal as an indicator also has some criticisms however, <clears throat> so I'm getting really passionate about this, if you couldn't tell my frog is not big up. Although it may not be the best indicator, it's better, it is way better than saying state school. And I want to change that narrative, I want to change the opinion, I want to change the discourse when we talk about disadvantaged students, and I think my dissertation will allow me to do that. However, I've just submitted my ethical form and I have a very, very, very long way to go. If you're a free school student, by the way, and you were interested, or you went to Oxford or Cambridge, do let me know somehow. I would love to have you involved in this research as a participant, fingers crossed. But while I'm feeling comfortable with the academic side of the Oxford Masters, which is something I didn't think I would say. I've been allowed to do some other things, which I really like as well. You guys know me, Mr. Access, Mr. Representation, Mr. Visibility. I am the MCR BAME officer of my college at Oxford, which is St. Anne's. I'm the first ever. They never had a constituted a BAME rep before. And considering that when I went to Wolfson College for my undergrad at Cambridge, and I actually was Ecology Diversity Officer, and I created the role of BAME Officer at Wolfson in Cambridge, I felt like I was more than capable of doing the same thing here in Oxford, let's say, and quite a bit. Then also, in terms of a big, big, big project, I have the Oxford Pakistani and Bangladeshi Access Programme. I'm spearheading that in the face of that. This one is quite unique because we're focusing on trying to empower parents, which is really cool. So we're doing events just for parents in Urdu and in Bangla, which is amazing. So we had our first event and now we have more happening throughout the next five months. Okay guys, I'm now gonna take an ad break here. Now, as I said, this video is sponsored by Cleanopedia and I want to show you how Cleanopedia and I have teamed up on how to, you see this? How to make sure that your clothes during this time of pandemic is cleaned at its best. So students, make sure you are watching this because you need to know. Come to washing up our laundry, the first thing you want to do is check the label on the actual product just to see what you can and you can't do. The next thing you want to do is wash your clothes with a good detergent that contains bleach. Then you want to follow the instructions on the product to see what is recommended. With this one, you can wash your clothes quite powerfully on a very low heat. However, if there is a member of your family who has a infection or a virus, you want to really disinfect it, then make sure regardless, you wash your clothes at a minimum of 60 degrees. Now, when it comes to disinfecting things like your other clothing garments and your underwear, you want to make sure that you separate from soil and non-soil because you don't want kind of any muckiness to be spreading around. So make sure you separate the two. And again, you want to make sure that you use a laundry detergent that contains bleach. If you have a laundry detergent that doesn't contain bleach, then you want to kind of use an alternative, maybe something like oxygen bleach. However, again, it's very important that you always, always read the labels and follow the instructions. And finally, you want to make sure that you clean the washing machine so that it itself remains free from germs. 
And that is how you disinfect your clothes, including your underwear and your other garments. If you want to find out more about Cleanopedia, then make sure you check the link in the description box down below. I will link in some of the articles that they shared with me. They're amazing, check them out. But without further ado, let's continue with the video. Of course, me being me, I'm someone that I always dibble dabble in so many other things. So reality is I'm never gonna be able to focus on just my course because there's all this happening. And so it's a shame, but I've become better at still giving my academics at least 70% of my attention. Before, I think I gave it like 50 or 40. Now I'm giving it at least 60 to 70%, which I think is quite good, considering that I have other things to do, that I like doing other things as well. So I think it's going well. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and catching up with me. Um, by the way, I do have a weekly vlog coming out. A lot of people have asked me, like, do weekly vlogs, do weekly vlogs, bad bitch again. But the thing is, what do you want to see? Just me in my room, on my laptop, in my underwear, because that's literally all I do. I don't, I don't know if you know this, guys, I don't even know this, but there's a pandemic, there's a virus going around. So I don't, I can't really go out and here's me chilling with my friends. It's very mundane and boring. I have to have my escapism, you know? I have to do certain projects. I have to go on my Switch. I have to watch my shows because I have to like realize that we are just in lockdown and it's, and it's just, but I will try and think of some creative ideas for you. I had a whole list. So you follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram. Those are the only social media platforms I use. And take care and God bless and be safe, okay? Be safe. Good luck with the rest of the academic year. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.